Yo guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to dive into Yuhi's Hive 2. It's one of my favorite synths at the moment. I've also just released a pack of sounds or presets for Hive 2 called Hexadecimals that you can pick up now from the website www.marillamusic.com. It's 90 presets designed by myself, a lot of kind of trance, side trance kind of sounds. Uh, also some stuff that you can use for ambient or other genres as well. Um, but in light of that, I thought let's take a look and check out a few tips and tricks, uh, a lot of modulation related stuff, as well as some little hidden features that you may or may not know about inside of Hive 2. Uh, it's a beast of a synth if you're not uh, aware of it. Uh, I kind of reach for that all the time at the moment in my own productions. So let's jump in and check these out. So first up, we're going to take a look at the filters. There's, in fact, uh, extra filter types that you may not know about uh, that you can access with the synth engine. So typically, you have per filter, filter 1 and filter 2, you have the low pass 12, uh, 24 bit dB uh, per octave, 12 dB, uh, band pass, high pass, and band reject and peaking filters. Um, but you can actually change between different filter types by using the synth engine controls at the top. Now the synth engine changes a number of parameters inside of uh, Hive 2, but one of them being the actual filter types. So in the normal mode, it is a ladder filter, much like you'd find in a mini Moog uh, self-oscillating filter. And then obviously you have the ladder filter now selected as a 24 dB low pass filter. We can take a listen to that one. So that is the default setting. If you switch it over to the clean mode, this is in fact a SVF or state variable filter, which has a completely different filter type, um, also available in all of these different uh, flavors, the 24 dB, 12 dB, etc. And you can hear the difference between the two of them. And then lastly, you also have a diode filter uh, in the dirty synth engine, which sounds completely different. We'll take a listen to this one. So yeah, that's three hidden filter types that you can select inside of Hive 2 uh, by choosing the synth, synth engine. This also affects a number of other things like the... Um, uh, the shape of the envelopes as well as how the detuning works. But yeah, uh, extra filter types, always a bonus uh, in case you did not know that those were available to you. So the next thing I want to look at is Hive has two LFOs available here, LFO 1 and LFO 2. But there are in fact a number of ways that you can get hidden LFOs uh, to work for you as well. Um, so if you run out of LFO sources by using these two here, what you can do is turn to the shaper uh, functions down at the bottom. So you get an, uh, you can essentially get another, another four LFOs out of this as well. Um, and you can customize the shape for these LFOs if you'd like by using the shaper here. So these can, because they can run in a loop mode, you can get them to act pretty much the same way that the standard LFOs would. Uh, to do this, let's say you want to replicate the triangle LFO that you have in LFO 1, but have this playing at a different speed, for example. We can go into the shaper section here, and you'll see shaper A would be the blue one, shaper B the row of green, and then the pink and the orange for C and D. Uh, so if we're going to focus just on one LFO, we can use shaper A, and we're going to have to get a waveform in here. So these are currently just set to saw waves like this. If we click here, we can actually edit the type or the shape. Uh, you can do just a single... Uh, shape like that or if you want to get the triangle exactly right we can do this so that when we run through segments one and two you're running through a full triangle wave and then you can set the speed and make sure that this is set to loop so that you get that constantly looping on itself uh, we can then just apply this to a cutoff for example and adjust the speed here so as I said, you've got four of those. And then additionally, you can actually go even further and get another two by using the functions. Um, 
It's a little bit harder to be exact with the shapes here, but the functions will work in a loop mode as well. So if we do the cycle on and off and apply the envelope shape to our cutoff filter, we'll just remove that one. Now by adjusting the attack and uh, release of this function envelope in loop mode, you'll get a sort of LFO-esque type um, effect as well. As I said, that one's going to be a little bit harder to dial in seeing as it doesn't sync uh, to the BPM that you're working at. But it is handy for doing stuff like uh, maybe uh, modulating pulse width, for example. We can send this one to our pulse width. and adjust the, the speed just by changing the attack and decay of that. So really nice to have those extra. So in, in at the end of the day, you've got the two LFOs plus another four, that's six plus another two, that's eight in total that you can utilize inside of Hive 2. So also speaking about the pulse width, um, there's no dial on Hive 2 to adjust the, uh, you have the square wave and then you have a half and narrow pulse. And then you have the pulse wave, which you can modulate the width of. However, you can't uh, do this statically just by adjusting the shape by by pulling down here yeah, anywhere. Uh, so what you what you can do is if you want to keep that static yet still adjust the pulse width to a fine amount and not just the half and, and uh, short pulse waves that they give you as presets there. What you can use is use a constant modulator down at the bottom. We can just drag this onto the pulse wave. And then you'll see down here in your matrix window, you can adjust the pulse width by changing the constant value, which will then be applied to the pulse width modulation. So you can check now, if we play that back, we can adjust the pulse width. However you see fit, just by changing the constant value. So following on from all the extra LFOs that you can get from the function and shape generators, there's one of the features that I really like in Hive 2 is pertaining to the wavetables. Uh, if I go to the wavetable here, we'll jump into wavetables, we'll choose uh, one of the wavetables. Uh, typically what you're gonna wanna do is sweep through them to generate some movement. It's one of the, the major draw cards of having a wavetable is this kind of movement that you get. Now, uh, typically what you do in most other senses is assign an LFO to the wavetable position and dial that in. Uh, but now you've used up an LFO uh, to do so. Now you do have a lot of LFOs, so chances are you're not going to run out of them, but one feature that I really like, which is really quick and easy to use, we'll just disable this one and remove this modulation again, is to run the wavetables in auto mode. You have a few different options for this in this wavetable setup here, and you can hit one shot, which will basically, according to the tempo that you set, that's the speed that it's going to run at, uh, will run through the entire wavetable and then hold it. This is great for sort of using the wavetables to make sort of attacky sounds. You can do it slowly as well. And then you also have a loop mode, so you can loop it forward, uh, straight forward through the whole thing and then reset to the beginning. And then you also have the reverse mode as well, which will loop to the end and then back again. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't sync, but for the most part, that doesn't bother me too much. Because quite often, you just want slow movement through the wavetables, like when you're generating pad sounds. It's a really nice little feature. It's a very quick and easy way to get that sweeping through the wavetables without having to set up a modulation uh, source and assign it and so on and so on. Really cool little feature as well. 
Now to take a look at some of the envelopes, uh, one thing that you uh, might be missing in Hive 2 that uh, you often see in stuff like Serum, for example, where you've got node-based envelopes is the ability to actually adjust the curve setting of the decay. Uh, you can't do that with the standard uh, AMP or mod envelopes. Um, you can, to an extent, change how they behave slightly by adjusting the synth engine. Uh, they do change the response of the curves slightly uh, for each of the envelopes. Um, but let's say, for instance, you really want like a really snappy um, curved decay on your filter, for example. Uh, there is a way to do this without using the mod envelope at all. Uh, and you can use the function envelopes or the function generators down at the bottom here uh, as uh, sort of percussion envelopes, uh, this typical percussion style envelope, this, which does actually have a slope dial. So obviously this one, you'll have more of this kind of shape where it's uh, high for a while and then drops sharply. Sloping to the other side will give you more of this um, curved shape that you might be looking for. So we can check that out now. Instead of using the mod envelope here, which might not be snappy enough for you, um, you can disable the mod envelope there and rather apply to the cutoff itself, but just take the envelope uh, from the function generator, assign that to the cutoff dial, and dial it in here at the bottom instead. And you'll see you'll be able to get a much more snappier uh, decay time by adjusting the slope. And we can adjust it the other way as well. So you'll see it holds it for longer and then drops off sharply. And another way you can do this as well is by actually drawing in it, um, drawing them in yourself with the shaper tool at the bottom. Uh, so if we use that one instead, let's disable this one and we'll use shaper A and we're going to assign that to the cutoff and let's bring up the modulation now you'll see it's re-triggering it all the time because it's currently set to loop mode you can adjust that and have that just set to a one-shot mode and you'll see now it's playing two because uh, we currently have two selected here you just need to select one of these shapes and now you can actually use this to draw the curve in. And you can also adjust the time uh, at which that curve takes to pull through. And this is quite handy if we set this to reset. This is quite handy for, let's say if you're working in 16th note bass lines, if you can select a 16th note there, this will cover the entire note. So pretty much what you see is what you get. Each 16th note is going to be synced to this uh, shape that you have drawn in here. And this is quite nice to use in tandem with the standard mod uh, mod uh, envelope for the filter. So you can have a, s a longer attack maybe a small amount, but still get that little bit of snap from the shaper envelope. Or from the function, vice versa, whichever one you decide to use. So we're going to look at the sequencer page now, the ARP and the sequencer. Um, so this is a cool little thing that you can do with uh, a lot of U, uh, UHE's pl or UHE's plugins. Uh, I covered this with a video I did about Repro, and uh, there was a few people that actually commented on it, I think during a live stream as well, that they didn't know that they could do this. Uh, you have this record mode, which is super handy for setting up sequences. All you need to do, and it does it, it's a step, uh, records in steps. Just enable the record mode and you can type in a couple of notes. And then it does, goes through the full sequence. I believe I played that one wrong. And we'll just go back into play mode now. And if you play down a note. It 
it's playing back the sequence. Now, the op sequence, you have the sequencer or you have the op, but the op actually functions with the sequencer as well. So you can enable the op and then it'll accept additional notes. It'll still run through the sequence that we have set here, but any additional notes will add them into the sequence, basically add that note to selected points in the sequence. So we can play that back now, I'll play two octaves. Still the sequence that we have. Uh, play a whole chord, for example. So you can get pretty interesting ARP patches uh, by actually enabling the sequencer first and then enabling the ARP and playing your chords and melodies through that instead. So let's look at the sample and hold functionality that you have now on the uh, LFOs. So you have sample and hold shapes that you can dial in here. Uh, we'll go with random hold. This can be assigned to anything. And let's dial that up. So there you go, you have some uh, SNH modulation happening on the filter now. There's a couple of different ways that you can do this though as well. One that I really like, which kind of gives you a more loopy, um, sort of predictable pattern, is by using the sequencer. So you'll notice on the sequencer you have the stand play mode or off uh, the record button, but you also have the mod button here. And what this will do is it will run the sequencer, but only the mod amounts that uh, are along here. You can actually dial in uh, precisely what, uh, it's basically a step modulator or a pattern modulator that you can use here to kind of get these same effects, uh, but in a pattern rather than randomly. So let's just disable this one again. And we're going to use uh, uh, down in our matrix window, select here. Yeah, and if you choose the seek, uh, sequencer mod output, we'll select that as our modulation source. <laughs> Uh, now if we hold down a note, you'll see it's running through the sequences, but not re-triggering the gate. So let's set this up a little bit higher, and we can now draw in amounts that we want to modulate our cutoff by. Draw in a couple of random values here, and dial up the modulation amount, and take a listen now. Oh, we need to assign that to our filter. Let's set that to a sixteenth note, a uh, sixteenth step pattern. So you can get that sort of slightly more predictable movement going on, uh, but kind of the same vibe as that random uh, SNH modulation. So there's some interesting stuff that you can do as well with routing certain modulation signals into other ones as well to trigger them. Uh, this is kind of a a lot of inspiration taken from modular synths uh, that they've implemented into a really simple way inside of Hive. And it's a great way for getting complex uh, modulation into your sounds. So we'll stick with this, this pattern that we've got here. If we want to add a few accents, for example, let's maybe take the random sample and hold that we have in LFO1. And we're going to let these values trigger the function envelope according to the speed at which this is set. And how you do this is you can actually select from the input section here. Uh, we'll select LFO1 as the trigger source for the function envelope. So you can see randomly now this is actually triggering the envelope even though I'm not playing any keys. Typically it would be the gate when it's set to none. But it's now every time the value from the random hold goes over a certain threshold, it triggers my envelope here. So we can actually now add this, let's say, uh, add the envelope to our cutoff, like we have here. We'll take the function envelope, dial in some modulation, and you'll see this envelope will be triggering on the cutoff as well as the mod now, so we kind of get a slightly more uh, 
complex rhythm going on there with a slight element of randomness added to it. Let's check that out. As opposed to before. We'll just dial that in now. So really, really cool stuff that you can do by just experimenting with uh, moving these things around. There's a couple of other controls that you can work with here as well on each of the modulation sections, which are also uh, often overlooked. Uh, to, for example, if you wanted to change the polarity to change from uni uh, from bipolar which is the default to a unipolar pattern let's say for instance uh, our random hold there the LFO uh, or this um, yeah let's do that with an LFO actually so let's uh, let's just reset this one quickly so we can kind of uh, have a look at that so let's say we have an LFO changing the filter of the uh, filter one. So you can see that sweeping up and then all the way back down again. Let's say I want to sweep only from the midpoint upwards uh, with our LFO that we have here. To do that, you come down to the bottom here and select this section here. You've got a few options. You can compress and expand the modulation signals and take a listen to the difference. And you can see it's kind of stays low up fast and then holds. If we do very expanded, and linear, so you get quite different um, shapes that you can do by that. But then you can also change the polarity. So you've got half wave plus, which basically cuts it off at the halfway park, uh, halfway mark holds it there and then only goes upwards but we wanted to just simply change it to a unipolar uh, modulation source instead so you can go down to unipolarize here and you'll see you'll only get modulation from the midpoint up to the top now and back down There's a couple of other things that you can do here as well. Let's say for instance we wanted to change the pitch uh, with a try uh, with the LFO. Um, let's modulate our tuning. Dial that up. And let's go up only. So let's unipolarize that one again. So we're going. We're going up from the bass note. Uh, now let's enable the quantizing. So we've got a quantize function here. If you select quantize, you can step it in integers. You can hear there's a little bit of stepping going on there. Uh, or you can step it by notes. Um, or even chords. So let's go for a minor scale, for example. Octaves. Let's go for a series. And you can also double up on these if you want to get higher uh, pitch mounts with this. Let's just assign this to the same pitch again. We'll do the same settings, unipolarize and select a major series. And then you can apply some more to that as well. Um, let's go with the slew limiter. So we'll just fast slewing on that just to kind of give it a bit of a glide. We'll go with smooth. We can even try going with different quantized settings for each of these. We'll go with the minor, uh, let's go with a minor chord. 
And the second one will go with Octaves and try that out. And all of that is coming from a single LFO modulating the pitch on oscillator one. So really, really cool how in-depth you can get with uh, creating these sort of quite complex shapes just from simple controls uh, and modules like a, a basic triangle LFO. And the last little thing, uh, this is fairly obvious, although I see a lot of synthesis uh, that come out that don't actually have this. Uh, all the UHE ones have these um, alternate and random modes you'll find this in serum as well but they're, they're often quite sort of like hidden away people don't realize that they're there to be used uh they're great little especially when using in a sequencer mode the gates will trigger a different uh trigger each time this is applied to something so for instance if we're using the alternate mode um we can apply that to panning for example we'll apply the panning to that and let's turn that fully up. So each time, every second note, it's going to go to one side, and every or every even note, it's going to go to one side, and every odd note, it's going to go to the other side. So we take play that back and take a listen to the effect that it gives you. And vice versa as well. Like we had the SNH. Uh, instead of using the SNH, let's say rather we'd prefer that the gate would change the filter to a random amount every single time. So let's bring the filter down and we'll bring the random and assign that to the cutoff. Let's just unipolarize this one. Enable the op for that. And this is useful when you're wanting these random things. Uh, if you were using the SNH, it would trigger every time that you have the set, like every eighth note or every sixteenth note. Um, but what if you wanted to put in holds, for example, if you wanted to tie notes together in the sequencer, you can set ties here. Uh, let's maybe just enable a little bit of glide on this as well. Maybe have some two tied together in one section. When they're tied together now, um, these gates are linked, so you'd get one random cutoff for this note only. This one would stay the same. Whereas if you were using the filter from or the uh, modulation from the uh, SNH, you would get a different uh, filter cut off for each of these. So it's quite nice to have this random one triggering by the gate instead. <laughs> Cool, so let's just uh, put all of this to use quickly. We'll just try and make a quick little patch uh, from scratch and use some of these things that we've been looking at. Let's try and do it with the dirty, you want to use that diode filter. I'm going to dial in a sequence. Uh, let's record some notes. And we'll play that back. Let's just unlink these. We'll get a... Uh, one with less uh, resonance on this side. Bring the octave of this one down. So let's get some filter modulation going now with this one. 
Um, let's go with the random for the filter. <laughs> Alternate for the panning. Bring in some sub wave as well. Uh, we'll go with the pulse for the sub. Try something different with uh, bringing in the subwave here. Yeah. Um, we're going to bring sub one into the filter two as well, but we're going to bring that an octave down. Let's do a sawtooth. on filter one we will bring that one in at different intervals so let's take the function envelope instead of triggering that via a gate we'll trigger that by our LFO let's set our LFO to eighth dotted or let's go with quarter dotted actually Let's just change the shape to a square. Ah, so the LFO is triggering by the gates. I actually want that to trigger uh, to sync instead. So you can see that envelope is triggering uh, when this is open. So let's uh, just change this back down to like an eighth dotted. So we're going to use this one now to modulate a little bit more. Uh, we'll do a little bit of the cutoff. And let's also use this to change the volume of the sub. this one to the cutoff we're going to unipolarize this so it's just going, going upwards from there
And then lastly, let's jump back into the op sequencer section. And let's grab a few of the mod values here. So we'll do, let's do three there, a little bit here, maybe some random values in there. And let's do these to max as well. So in the modulation section again in the matrix, let's jump into uh, the sequencer mod values. We're going to send that to jump into the FX section again. We're going to send the sequencer mod values to the reverb mix. And once again, we'll just unipolarize this, dial that up to maximum and take a listen. Maybe back off a little bit so it's not full wet. And then we can get quite wide and big reverbs going on here. Bring the dampening down. Cool, so there you have it, some cool stuff that you can do with modulation and different filter types, little hidden tricks that you can find in Hive 2 when you kind of dig around a little bit under the surface. Uh, Got to say, I love the synth at the moment. It's kind of like my workhorse right now. Um, and uh, yeah, I kind of reach for this more often than anything else at the moment. So yeah, go check out Hive 2. I have just done a brand new bank of patches for Hive 2 that's available from the website, www.marulamusic.com. You'll find the link here on the channel. Um, you can pick up hexadecimals now for Hive 2. Uh, it's 90 presets from myself. Um, so yeah, so definitely go check those out. I'll leave a link to the demo uh, in the comments as well. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and found this useful. If you do, please consider subscribing. It helps us out a lot. Uh, then you can stay up to date with new videos as they come out. Uh, make sure you hit that notifications button as well and smash that like button. I will catch you guys again soon right here at Marula Music. See you then. Cheers.